Hello and welcome to our service, our Good Friday service, as churches together in Sleaforden District. I'm Mark Thompson, I'm the rector at St Botolph's Church, and I'm the chair of Churches Together at the moment, so I'm here in that capacity to welcome you to our service. Of course, we would have loved to have had a walk of witness as we usually do, but obviously last year and this year, the pandemic has prevented us from having that great event where we can go out and declare our faith quite openly in the town and to celebrate a Good Friday. But we can't do that this year again. So as churches together, we've put together this little service uh, as a time of reflection, and we hope that you will enjoy it. Each of our churches has been able to participate in it, either by doing a reading or by doing some of our music this morning. I hope you do enjoy it, and I look forward to the time when we can once again have our walk of witness, when we can move freely about and worship God in our churches without any worries. So I hope they enjoy it, and I hope they all keep safe. Thank you. trial and rest of arrest of Jesus. Immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas one of the twelve arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and stuck the, struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me? as though I were a bandit. Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest 
and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testifying against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. Jesus before Pilate. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders, the scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. 
Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when we think of your sacrifice on the cross, when we think of the suffering you endured for our sakes, the depth of anguish that you went through, we have no words to express our worship and praise. We can only stand in awe and in silence offer you our heartfelt worship and thanks. But we cannot remain silent forever because your sacrifice demands a response of joyful praise. We want to shout and worship and cry Hosanna and cry praise be the God who sent his son to die for us. Lord, with joy we celebrate your death on the cross, not wanting to brush aside the pain and the anguish, but to realise what you went through for us. And that fills our hearts with bubbling over thanksgiving and praise to you, Lord Jesus. Be praise forever and ever. And as we come to offer praise, we also come to bring before you the needs of this world, of our churches, of those that we care for. We hold before you in our prayers the people in our lives who are in great need, those who are ill, those who are suffering as a result of this last year of lockdown, maybe through loss of livelihood, maybe through illness, or bereavement. Lord, heal and bless and strengthen those who are in most need. We hold before you our nation and other nations and pray that this may be a time when differences can be overcome and leaders can learn to work together for the good of the whole world. We pray for those 
places where there is tension and conflict, where within a nation people are mistreated and suffer greatly, where between nations there is disagreement that leads to violence or hurtful sanctions. Lord, we pray for peace in our world and ask that your example of self-sacrifice will be something that brings us together and establishes peace. And we pray, Lord, for your church as we celebrate this day, your death, and in days to come, we celebrate your resurrection, your conquering of death. We pray that you would fill us with your spirit. May we worship and serve you with all our lives so that all we do may be done to your praise and glory and that the world may see and know your love for us shown in that death on the cross. In the name of Christ, we offer all these prayers. Amen. And let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Gospel according to St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Crucifixion of Jesus. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. When they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, carrying lots, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling upon Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello everyone and welcome to our talk on this Good Friday. My name is Reverend Al Jenkins and I'm the curate at St Bossel's Church in Quarrington. At the beginning of the talk I'd just like to reel back the years a little bit and talk about my experience of the first walk of witness in which I took part. It was April 2014 and I was standing outside the railway station, feeling a little bit lost and a little bit self-conscious, when my good friend David Hitchcock came up to me and said, Al, are you going to carry the cross then? I thought to myself, what, me? No, no, that's not, that's, not, that's not what I do. But something made me pick that cross up. 
I think it was then that it first struck me about what being a Christian was really about. Displaying my faith and my belief in Jesus' sacrifice so that others could see it and in time experience it. So as we began the walk, I was very self-conscious. And I think that many new Christians or those who have returned to faith, such as I had, feel that way as they start to make their discipleship more visible. As we passed the Handley Memorial, we came into full view of the busy holiday tumult of people. I began to think to myself, what am I expecting here? People walked across the road, words of disdain forming on some of their lips as we disturbed their bank holiday shopping and leisure time. Others stood and watched, but inside I wanted to scream out, don't you know why you have this freedom? I thought perhaps I would go and talk to someone about Jesus, but I didn't. And perhaps too, like my hesitancy of taking up the cross, this was an indication of where my faith was at the time. So imagine if that's how we feel as we go through the walk of witness. How must our Lord have felt as he was scourged, mocked and driven through the streets of Jerusalem? The one who had come to save us, thousands upon thousands of people had listened to him. He had cured, healed and blessed so many. But the ultimate result was those in power wanted rid of him. So here... The Son of God is a discarded common criminal, and even his best friends had deserted him. Good Friday is a day of loss and pain, one of mourning, but through all of that we are never left alone. Our God never does that to us. In Psalm 139 verse 14, the psalmist cries out, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God created us so that we would desire an ongoing and full relationship with him. And what loving and trusting relationship would the one leave the other struggling? God does not do that. At this present time, I'm considering where and how my ministry might develop and where it might take Jane and me and discerning what God has planned for us. Now occasionally it gets lonely and I do get tired and a little lost. It is in these times that God, God the Holy Spirit, strengthens and guides me. A few days ago I was walking my dog Bertie and thinking about life in general and a little bit about this talk. I was listening to the wonderful hymn, How Great Thou Art, probably my favourite hymn ever. And the verse, but when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. In an instant, my whole body was taken over by a tsunami of goosebumps. They were so strong that I could hardly move forward, and they lasted and they lasted. I have no doubt in my heart that the Spirit was speaking to me once more. In that moment of feeling lonely and feeling tired, the Spirit reminded me of the sacrifice of our Saviour, in which the world was forgiven in his death at the cross. The church today faces a crisis. In many quarters we are seen as an inconvenience, a tawdry little sect of people who hold on to long ago debunked ideologies. The modern world has it all sorted out. Individuality is the way ahead. How much do I have is the sweeping ideology. It is distressing to see how much pain there is in the world how insignificant we can appear in the scope of all of it. But it is in Jesus Christ that we move forward as one body, 
a community of believers. We are stronger together. And it is on Good Friday that that strength is tested. As his body is broken on the cross, where do we seek and address our own brokenness? A truly contrite heart, one which helps to put aside our own wantonness and bring to bear the good that Jesus has demonstrated for us so viscerally in the forgiveness of our sins. The Gospel of John leaves us in no doubt that Easter Sunday is a little while away yet. Right now we stand or kneel at the foot of the cross. We are distraught and we are lost. Our hearts will feel broken once more. Yet we will once again acknowledge our sins before the cross and wait prayerfully and patiently for what Jesus promised. May you feel the presence of God with you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we come to an end of our time together, um, can I say thank you to every one of those who have participated and contributed in, in any way whatsoever. Special thanks to Paul in um, pulling the different uh, elements of the service together technically and putting this on for you this evening. I'd like to finally offer a blessing for us all to share. Christ behind us in all of our yesterdays. Christ with us in our today. Christ before us in all of our tomorrows. Alpha and Omega, Christ, Lord of all. By the wounds and the blood of the Lamb, may God guard and keep us. Amen. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his forgiving power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his cleansing power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his saving power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his releasing power. Praise be to the blood of the Lamb in his victorious power. By the wounds and the blood of the Lamb, may God guard and keep us. Amen. And may God, who puts all things together, makes all things whole, who made a lasting mark through the sacrifice of Jesus, the sacrifice of blood that sealed the eternal covenant, who led Jesus, our great shepherd, up and alive from the dead, now put you together, provide you with everything you need to please him. Make us into what gives him most pleasure, by means of the sacrifice of Jesus the Messiah. All glory to Jesus, for ever and always. Amen. May God bless you this week.